Hello students. Good morning. This is Akash Kotawar, Faculty of Biology. Now, we are continuing the chapter Reproduction in Organism, Part 2. As we already discussed about the introduction about this chapter and we have started the asexual reproduction topic. And now in asexual reproduction topic, we have discussed uh, the different six types of names that is fission, budding, fragmentation, regeneration, spore formation and vegetative propagation. We have already discussed about all the different kinds of asexual reproductions with their respect to examples except vegetative propagation. So we have completed all the asexual reproduction topics. Now today we are begin with this class with vegetative propagation. Now what exactly the vegetative propagation? Students, the vegetative propagation refers to the production of new plants from the vegetative parts like roots, stems, leaves is called vegetative propagation. That means in the parent plant body the new plant will develop either from root or stem or leaves that kind of reproduction is called vegetative reproduction as the roots stems and leaves are considered as vegetative parts of the plant body as we already discussed in the fifth chapter of the first 11th standard in the morphology of flowering plants now the parts which helps to develop the new plant body are known as vegetative propagules that means if in any plant if the root is helps to develop new plant that root part is called vegetative propagule now here are some examples are there in different plants different parts different vegetative parts helps in this vegetative propagation and they are recognized as different names like here given tubers rhizomes bulbs buds runners suckers stolons offsets please remind all these terms these are very important for your examination these are the different names of vegetative propagules which helps to produce new plants from their vegetative parts now we'll go through the a table here the examples of vegetative propagation now whatever the examples are given here are considered as natural methods like in first section the roots are there the roots act as a vegetative propagule in which the roots are helps to develop new plant body like the examples are there dahlia asparagus dalbergia so these are the examples of roots in which from roots the new plants are developed now in stem now the stem is very important aspect in case of vegetative propagation as different in different plants this stem act as a vegetative propagule with different names now here there are so many examples are given like tubers the tubers act as a vegetative propagule in potato the bulbs in garlic and onion in rhizo uh, rhizome ginger turmeric banana combs colocasia and amorphophallus suckers mint and chrysanthemum runners oxalis and centella stolons jasmine and offsets pistia and iconia now the pistia and iconia are aquatic plants they float on the water surface and with the help of offsets they float now offsets which are developed in plants in these plants are of the stem now these are different vegetative propagules developed from the plants in different plant bodies or different species we can say in case of leaves now here bryophyllum begnonia Kalunque and walking fair. These are different examples in which the leaves act as a vegetative propagule. 
we already discussed about these uh, example like a bryophyllum we already discussed about the bryophyllum in 10 standard a bryophyllum leaf on the leaf edges a small buds are developed on which the birds develops uh, roots which come into contact with the soil and detach from the parent leaf and develops as a new plant body so it is called leaf buds so in bryophyllum leaf the leaf buds are developed on the leaf edges so these are the plants in which leaves act as a vegetative propagules now in one more thing bulbils in agave lily and dioscoria these are the specialized plants in which bulbils these are the special kinds of structures develops on the plant body which helps to develop a new plant body so these are the different examples of vegetative propagation which consider as a natural methods means without any artificial conditions they naturally grow now here are some of artificial vegetative propagations are also examples are there now before that if you go through these different diagrams the first is a runner oxalis example now between two plants there is a the horizontal stem is there on horizontal stem from each every node the adventitious roots are developed and above that the new leaves are developed so this is a runner means the stem run horizontally on the surface of earth or the soil rhizome it's a ginger tuber it's a potato on potato the birds are there which helps to produce new leaves in offset pistia aquatic plant birds of bryophyllum leaf bulb it's an onion and again bulbig so these are the different examples of natural vegetative propagules okay students now here are some examples of artificial vegetative propagation these are mainly three types the fourth one is different from these three the first is cutting layering grafting and turians now what is cutting actually the cutting takes place in sugarcane rose and bougainvillea cutting means a part of plant branch cut obliquely and that can planted in the soil the it can develops roots and grow into a new plant it's a common thing we commonly used in our homes also the layering the layering occurs in strawberry jasmine and grape vine now what layering actually in layering without cutting a plant body or uh, any part of the plant body we just induce the development of roots on any branch by induce by spraying artificial auxins and gibberellins so that once the roots are developed on the branch we cut that and plant into the soil so this kind of uh, artificial vegetative propagation called as layering the grafting it is mostly done in the citrus family and apple pine and plum now what is grafting grafting means two different plants having two different uh, structures like stalk and sion stalk is a basic structure we cut obliquely and sion is a one more part of another plant which joined together and then these two structures combinedly developed as a single plant it is called grafting we already know and we already discussed i think in the 10th standard then the last one is sturians it is normally takes place in fleshy birds in aquatic plants example potamogeton and utricularia so these are the some of the artificial vegetative propagations so here these are the natural roots stem leaves and bulbils in stem there are different types are there tubers bulbs rhizomes combs suckers runners stolons and offset now students this is about the asexual reproductions in the animals as well both as well as in animals and plants we have discussed vision budding 
spore formation vegetative propagation <coughs> okay and sorry excuse me what we have discussed fission budding fragmentation spore formation vegetative propagation now let us start here uh, some special information now vegetative propagation by roots how does it occur now the roots of some woody plants produce shoots which grow into a new plant like muraya modified tuber roots of sweet potato asparagus dahlia tapioca tinospora etc develops buds and each of which form a new plant it's a information already we have discussed by leaves in bryophyllum and begonia same thing now it is a one more important point is there which I regularly ask you in an examination here it is terror of bengal now what is terror of bengal it is a common name of an aquatic plant called water hyacinth its scientific name is icornia it is an aquatic plant it is considered as a terror of bengal it was first introduced in india because of the beautiful flower and shape of leaf it propagates very quickly by vegetative mode and drain out dissolved oxygen from water bodies that means it increase the bod it increase the bod students now what is bod biological oxygen demand means the demand of the oxygen is increased in the aquatic bodies due to the in expansion of this aquatic plants it continuously produce its next generation by vegetative mode rapidly so that it occupies whole the water body so that remaining all other animals and plants will face the deficiency of the oxygen that is called biological oxygen demand bod so it most important to helps the biological oxygen demand in the aquatic bodies it is called terror of bengal it was introduced in india because of its beautiful flowers and the shape of leaves it is most important question as per your board examination out of three times one time it compulsory comes in your board examination now so this is about the asexual reproduction now students we'll start with the sexual reproduction now what is sexual reproduction now the sexual reproduction involves the fusion of male and female gametes by the process of fertilization it result in offsprings that are not identical to the parents or not or to themselves means they are completely different from each other and from also their parents when a male and female gametes are produced from a male and female parents respectively then it is called unisexual reproduction for example man cow all mammals when both male and female gametes are produced from a single individual then it is called bisexual reproduction earthworm we'll discuss about this in detail in later right so what is sexual reproduction it involves basically the both parent that is male and female and we already discussed about the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction in sexual reproduction gametogenesis occurs by the using meiosis that is gamete formation then fertilization takes place then zygote formation takes place then the embryogenesis development of fetus everything so there are different types of events takes place in sexual reproduction we'll discuss later in detail now here now there are three phases in an organism's life with respect to reproduction now with respect to reproduction the whole life span of the every individual will classified into or divided into three different phases that is called juvenile phase reproductive phase and old phase the first is a juvenile phase second is a reproductive phase and third is a old phase now what exactly is this the first is a zoonotic phase 
or we can say this is called vegetative phase in case of animals we can say juvenile phase in case of plants we can say vegetative phase now all the organisms have to reach a certain phase of growth and maturity in their life before they can reproduce sexually this growth period is known as a juvenile phase or vegetative phase it duration varies in different organisms means once the zygote forms this zygote will develops into an embryo then it will develops into fetus and it delivers as a baby now this baby will grow in a size and up to puberty it will develops physically it gets maturity and in the puberty it starts able to produce gametes that is called reproductive stage now before reproductive stage whatever the events takes place that is called physical growth now this physical growth which takes place in the whole period that the whole period is called juvenile phase in case of plants the vegetative part means from the germination of seed to up to the production of flowers the whole period is called vegetative phase once the flowering starts the reproductive phase of plants will begin so juvenile phase means it is a pre reproductive phase now the second is reproductive phase. when the organism starts reproducing in their life cycle this is known as reproduction phase. means in animals like in case of humans in puberty the male and female starts producing their gametes means they attain the maturity of reproductive phase now they can able to reproduce in case of plants it starts or it begins with the production of flowers means the flowering is the sign of reproductive phase beginning of the reproductive phase of a plant the third most important is a senescent it's called old phase that means end of the reproductive phase end of the reproductive phase it is called senescent phase or old phase after this individual dies up. that means it's end up. so this is the life cycle which includes which classified into three different phases juvenile phase reproductive phase and senescent phase in flowering plants if you go in flowering plants like there are three types of flowers are there annuals biennials and perennials now annuals which means the plants which are complete their life cycle within one year very short period biennials in two years perennials it is more than two years so here in annuals like wheat rice all vegetables etc the life cycle is completed within one year means from the seed germination to production of seed all the events takes place within the short period within the one year so they are called as annual plants biannuals in these plants the life cycle takes place in two years the first year only vegetative part is there that is seed germination and growth of the physical body of the plant that is development of root development of stem development of branches etc in the second year they start producing flowers and they undergo sexual reproduction to produce new generation that is seeds so in first year vegetative part part develop takes place in second year flowering takes place so it is called biennial plants in third perennial plants it means <coughs> these are mango orange apple means once they achieved reproductive phase means after the seed germination they grow in a size after growing in a size they start producing flowering that is they begin with the reproductive phase and then in every year in particular season they produce flowers fruits and seeds for example in every year in a summer season mangoes are produced like that each and every perennial plant produce in a in their respective seasons a continuous production of fruits and flowers so these are called perennial plants so in flowering plants there are three types of plants are there annuals biennials and perennials 
I think we already discussed all these things in 9th standard, right? Now, there are some expressions are there. What exceptions? Now, here one plant is there, Strobilanthus kuntiana. It is commonly called Nila kuringi, in which the flowers once in a 12 years. This plant flowered during September October period in, 20, in once in a 12 years. Means in every 12 years only it produces flowers. So it is a some accepted case. Second one is bamboo tree or bamboo species. That means they can produce flowers only once in their whole life cycle. That is after that it can die. The like bamboo species flowers only once in their lifetime. Generally after 50 to 100 years. So produce large number of fruits and die. So once in a time they produce maximum number of fruits so that the next generation will continue and that is in between 50 to 100 years. So once the germination takes place up to 50 years there will be no flowering takes place and after 50 years before 100 years or 50 to 100 years it produces large number of flowers fruits and then they die. So these are the some exception cases in the plants. Okay students. So this is about the reproduction sexual reproduction about the uh, about the sexual reproduction in plants. Now here in animals. In animals on the basis of breeding time the animals are classified into two types. One is called seasonal breeders and continuous breeders. Now seasonal breeders means they reproduce in particular season only. They cannot breed or reproduce whole the year. Like for example, fishes are there, lizards are there, birds are there, frogs are there. Some birds are seasonal breeders and some birds are continuous breeders. Right? If you go with the frogs, frogs and fishes normally they reproduce in the monsoon season where water is essential for this reproduction. So large number of eggs are produced by fishes and frogs in the water. So they only breed in the monsoon season they consider as seasonal breeders. In continuous breeders there is no particular season the whole year at any time they can reproduce like cattle, rabbits, humans like all the mammals. All mammals are continuous breeders. Okay, so these are the basis on the breeding time in animals. Now, one more important thing is there placental mammals. Now, what exactly placenta? Placenta is a intermediate tissue between fetus and the mother uterus. It is the most important characteristic feature of mammals. Now, the mammals are three types. Egg laying mammals and placental mammals. The placental mammals exhibit two kinds of most important reproductive cycles. Especially the placental females of mammal exhibit cyclic changes in the activities of ovaries and accessory ducts as well as hormones during the reproductive phase. That means these are two types of cycles are the estrus cycle and menstrual cycle. Now what exactly is estrus cycle? The estrus cycle is the term for cyclic changes during the reproductive phase in non-primates. Now what primates and non-primates? Now here the uh, some examples are given in the menstrual cycle like humans, apes, monkeys, chimpanzees, gorillas all are considered as primates and except all these mammals all are considered as non-primates. So in non-primates Estrus cycle is there that is a same reproductive cycle but the names are different because <clears throat> in non primates whatever the cyclic changes takes place in the uterus the same thing happens in also in primate but in primates after the completion of cycles the external secretion occurs but in case of estrus cycle there is no external secretion occurs at the end of cycle so hence they are different one is estrus cycle and one is menstrual cycle. Now students, this is the some introduction of sexual reproduction in plants and animals. Okay. Now today we have discussed the 
remaining portion of the asexual reproduction that is vegetative propagation that is the only characteristic feature of plants it is not takes place in the animals and then we have discussed about the artificial vegetative propagation and then we have started the sexual reproduction in plants okay so in sexual reproduction there are different kinds of phases are there the total lifespan divides into juvenile phase reproductive phase and old phase okay in flowering plants there are three types of plants are there annuals biannuals and perennials some exceptions are there these two are most important especially in the especially about strobila and the skundiana nila kurunji it is the most important one mark question frequently asked in your board examination so please note down it is most important question and then sexual reproduction in animals seasonal breeders continuous breeders then in placental mammals there are two types of reproductive change uh, cycles are there estrus cycle and menstrual cycle so for today we are going to stop here and we'll continue the sexual reproduction in the next class okay thank you students thank you very much